Alright guys, welcome back to your 14th art tutorial and in this video I want to teach you guys how to create a matrix. So first of all, what the heck is a matrix beside, you know, uh, the movie? Well, what a matrix is, is it's similar to a data frame, but it has one exception. You know how a data frame or even an Excel file can have each column store a different data type. For example, one column can be names, one column can be numbers, another column can be dates. Well, with a matrix, the entire thing needs to be the same type of data. So it could be all numerical, it could be all text. However, you're not going to see a lot of text matri matrices, I think that's how you say it, because People typically just store numbers in a matrix because you can do a bunch of cool things to it like we're going to see later on. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to teach you guys how to create one right now. So first, like everything else, just, just give it a name to store everything in. I'm just going to name it one. And the keyword to create it is, who would have guessed, matrix. Now this function is going to take two pieces of information. The first piece of information is what numbers do you want to use so typically what we're going to do in the future is we're going to be importing you know a list of numbers from either a database or maybe a HTML table or somewhere else but right now let's just go ahead and use a simple list of numbers 1 to 100 just for an example so that's the first piece of information it needs the second piece is how many rows do you want to break this list into so in order to do that N row stands for number of rows and we'll just go ahead and break this into 10 rows. So again we're making a matrix with the numbers 1 through 100 and it's going to be broken into 10 rows and of course 10 columns. So in order to show that or print it out on the screen just go ahead and type the name of it and run this bad boy. And as you can see in the console 10 rows, 10 columns, 1 to 100. Alright so that was you know kind of interesting but now you're scratching your head and you're thinking, all right, so what's the point of creating a matrix when we could just create a data frame? Well, the cool thing that you could do with a matrix is actually when you have more than one. So let me go ahead and create two similar matrices right now. So I'm going to create one matrix and let's just uh, put 10 numbers in each. So 51 to 60 and we'll break them up into two rows each. And now I'm gonna copy this because I'm lazy. And I'm gonna name the second one three. Now for this example, it doesn't really matter what numbers you use, but make sure that you have the same number of items in each matrix. So let's just make this one, I don't know, like 61 to 70 or something. So each of these two and three, actually I'll print them out right now so you guys can see. two and three each have 10 items in them and also two rows. So why is this important? Well whenever we have similar matrices check this out. Well typically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to test if they're similar using DIM. Now what this does is it actually tell you, tells you the number of rows and columns in each one. So I should probably mention that before I start doing anything cool to them. So if we do this right here, it says two rows, five columns, and as you can see, the matrices two and three are similar. So what do I keep talking about this similar stuff for? Who cares if they're similar or different? Well, the cool thing is when they are similar, you can perform equations on them. What am I talking about? So let me print these out again so you guys can see the original ones, and then I wanna show you guys something cool. Say we want to take matrix 2 and multiply it by matrix 3. Well, here's our original one, 51, and here's our, or excuse me, this is 2, and this is 3, and the resulting matrix is essentially this. 51 times 61 equals 3111. 55 times 65 equals 3575. And what it does is it goes through every single element in the matrix and it performs a certain equation in a nice graphical order. So this is really useful whenever you're working with a lot of data and you want to perform an equation on a similar set of data 
and this is just a really basic example but remember this because we're gonna come back to this concept later on so anyways thank you guys for watching and in the next video what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to read CSV or Excel data from your local computer and from a file on the internet it's gonna be sweet so I'll see you then